Good morning, Daniel Spatz from Miami. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the last video about uh, how to prepare mentally for a tennis match. I love it. Honestly, I saw it and my friend Andrew Giambarba did a wonderful job. We put uh, music and uh, we hope you like the music. I think gave uh, the, the, the video much more, you know, life and, and fun, you know. So we, we love to, to get better. So uh, once again, I, I, I'm open for suggestions comments about the videos if you want to hear more tips or more better music or different music let us know and we are open for everything the topic today is great because um, I, i've been watching professional tennis for so many years the first time that i watched a professional tennis players practicing was back in 1980 no i would say 1977 in argentina buenos aires i was watching guillermo villas hitting with Ely Nastasi. Uh, so I'm talking about history, uh, past, you know, champions. So also I saw Jimmy Connors, Bjorn Borg, all these guys, Manuel Orantes, Adriano Panata, Harold Solomon, Eddie Dips, all these great champions, Vita Girolaitis. When they went to Argentina, I was 13, 14, 15 years old, and I learned a lot from them. And then I moved, I became a tennis coach, and I uh, also had the chance to see uh, up-and-coming players uh, like uh, Guillermo Perez Roldan, Franco Davin, Nicolas Pereira, uh, the Chileans, and, and, and so many other players. Gustavo Cuerten when he was 17, the Brazilian former number one. And then recently, all this Djokovic, Nadal, Federer, eh, Roddick, Blake, Del Potro. And they have all things they share in common that I want to share with you what they have, what we can learn from them and incorporate it in our uh, habits, routines. I'm not talking about styles, shots, no. It's about habits, uh, manners, rituals that they have when they practice. I'm talking about practice time, no match play, practice time. And these things apply to junior players, uh, league players, okay, college players, and of course, uh, professional players as well, wannabe pros, entry-level players, wannabe future stars. Okay, let me share with you what, what, what my thinking is about pros, what the pros do in practice. The first thing that I, they all have, unless they move uh, uh, Andrew to the, to, to the tennis court, we don't have a, a player to hit. So uh, I'm going to show, I'm going to demonstrate some things, visual things, easy to apply to your game eh? and, and, and to, to get better. Number one, they all have intensity. I've never seen a, a professional player standing still, lazy, to begin the practice. So even though they start from really a, a low, slow movement and kind of a little easy warm up with little movement. They all have energy, intensity. As soon as they feel ready, they start moving and they're up in their toes and they do the split step between stroke. You never, you will never see, never, a professional player standing or top player, top junior college player. So what the, the other people do, normal players, they stand still in the warm up. They just warm up their arms like this. And after two minutes, they said, I'm ready. They are not ready. They are ready to lose, to play worst. So make sure you move your feet. Be, be very intense. And at the same time, be ready. Be ready for the ball. See, the readiness is very important. See, a lot of good players, even good players, again, standing, and or maybe dropping the racket after hitting, not returning to the middle. So even the ball is here and the warm up, hit recover, little split, hit the ball, move, see the opponent hitting, little split, and then ready for the next shot. Okay, number two uh, is about purpose. They exactly know what they're doing. Okay, so they work in specific things that given they. Uh, whatever it might be, you know, a, a cross court, down the middle, uh, top spin a slice. So make sure you have a purpose every time you go out in your practice. Okay. 
Number three, control. A pros don't miss, especially the first balls, the first hits. They, they get a lot of balls in play. Eh? What I see in, in recreational players, juniors, is this. They start the first or maybe the second ball, they say boom, pounding, blasting balls away, crushing forehands and backhands. Eh? And they, they, they feel bad, of course. So make sure you start very slow, very easy, eh? hitting the ball deep. That's the most important thing at the beginning of the practice. Okay, the next thing to do to think is about uh, uh, not missing. If you see a pro practicing, it's amazing. A top, a top player. With one ball, they are capable to get maybe 100 okay, from the, from the get-go. So make sure you work in your control. As I said before, start very slow, find your rhythm, but don't miss. That's the mentality. I don't want to miss. Okay? The next topic also is footwork. As I said at the beginning, intensity is both related, of course. But they, what I mean by footwork is not just moving at the place, it's just adjusting and getting those little steps to get in position. Okay, you, 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 I don't see that in adults. When I'm coaching, uh, 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 you know, adult players, league players, um, I see this quite often. Long steps, they're reaching, flat-footed, related with preparation, uh, and and they don't really adjust. Uh, so so always working those little. Even the easiest ball requires. Uh, look at me. That ball is pretty easy, and this is a very good drill to do if you are by yourself. Hitting balls, feeding balls, helping yourself, and getting in position to hit the ball in the same, same. See, I'm kind of dancing around, moving my feet, finding the ball out in front, okay, adjusting my footwork. So it's, it's something good to do, not just feeding ball. So I think uh, it's, it's a nice uh, uh, self drill to improve. And final thing the pros do is uh, they do a lot of repetition. Everybody wants to get better. It comes to me or my colleague, the coaches. Oh, I want to improve my tennis, Daniel. I want to get better. Help me out. I want to win more matches. Okay, you know, my backhand cross court is landing too short on the court. And we started, I said, okay, let's do some backhand cross courts, uh, Peter, eh? uh, Mary. Eh, okay, so I feed the ball to them. We start the rally. First of all, the first ball goes to the fence because they, they over swinging, over hitting, or too short because they're under swinging, hitting too, you know, uh, uh, soft. And uh, uh, we, again, to start talking about movement and so the stuff, all the stuff. And, and, and then when, when we finally, we find the rhythm, we found the rhythm, the timing, and we maybe took uh, 10 minutes, seven. They don't want to do it anymore. They said, oh, I'm, no, I'm fine. I got it now, thanks. And they maybe hit 10 balls only. I said to them, hey, wait a minute. 10 is one rally, one point in a whole match. Let's do it again. No, it's too, it's too long, it's, it's boring. I want to change. Say, no, 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 just do it again, do it again. We need to do it again. And keep hitting that backhand cross court over and over and over. 50, 100. What pros do, maybe they don't count. They are not counting the number of balls they get, you know, 91, 92. But they know they have to do a lot of repetition to improve, to get better. They are assuming that it's part of their job to do it. So it's like a basketball player shooting, eh, you see, Soccer players kicking 100 balls in practice, not just two times. So this message is very important also for junior players. So go to the court with the idea, okay, I'm going to spend 20 minutes, at least 15 to 20 minutes in each drill, each skill. You want to get better, you want to practice. Whatever it might be, back and cross course, forehand down the lines, at least, maximum, 20 minutes, 15 to 20, not five. Okay, you want to count? Good, count it. You want to go by time? Go by time. But let the coach and coaches also 
Eh? Be more patient and be willing to work longer with the student. Of course, you can put some targets and some motivational things. If you get 20 in a row, you scored points, for example. Or let's get um, today, the, the goal will be keeping 30 in a row. Until we don't get 30, we don't stop. Things like that. I'm not talking about just rallying. Come on, let's go, let's go. No. Okay? So, but spend more time. Extend the time. And you're going to feel better. Not just five minutes. I hope you enjoy these tips that I learned from pros, not from myself or just reading books. Watching pros practicing. Okay? They are very intense, great footwork. They have a lot of control. They do a lot of repetition. And they have a special purpose when they go out and practice. Okay? Of course, there are so many more things that we can share. I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you next time. Have a wonderful week. We're here again. This is a bonus, an extra tip. As you can see, guys, this is real life on the court. We were hitting with my friend Andrew Jambarba, um, and we were experimenting all the, the things that we were discussing in, in, the, in, the, in the video about movement, control, repetition, okay, purpose. Uh, and we're going to share in the future about the purpose of the drill today that we had was playing to the opponent's backhand. Very important tactic, easy to achieve. So the, the future, the bonus is about, uh, and we, we were feeling it, is about, and discussing it, is about mental, the mental approach when drilling. Uh, uh, last week we talked about match preparation, how to prepare mentally for matches, how to think. Now it's about practicing. I see a lot of people getting frustrated, upset, very quickly. Rapidly getting upset because they're making errors, one backhand at the net, one backhand long, forehand wide. Come on, pros, they get upset too, I can tell you. They sometimes are very angry, very frustrated, but they put it behind quickly, rapidly. They, I see so many players actually kicking tennis balls, throwing the rackets in practice. Eh, I'm not preaching to do it, but uh, eh, especially if you have only one racket, they have probably 15 in, the bag, in their bags. So eh, eh, they, they see them are very upset. Come on, man, what are you doing? Come on. Look at me. Come on, let's go. Move. Get the ball and play. And immediately they change. Very quickly they change the uh, facial expression, body language, chemistry. Everything becomes positive again, and they are ready for the next shot. So, the tip is stay positive, calm. You have the right to be upset, frustrated. It's good to release your negative emotion. But please, make sure they are away very quickly. Put them aside very rapidly. Move on. Okay. Next ball is a wonderful opportunity to improve and to get better. Thanks. <laughs>